Hi, I'm Robbie Robertson, CEO and co-founder of Sidera Technologies. I'm gonna be telling you about an exciting new publicly available tool for the small SAD community called the SSRI Knowledge Base. I'll start with a few slides describing the story behind the Knowledge Base and its design and development. And then I'll demonstrate the tool for you in my web browser and talk through some additional details. So first we'll start with some background. The SSRI Knowledge Base is the result of a collaboration between the Small Satellite Reliability Initiative, or SSRI, and the Small Spacecraft Systems Virtual Institute, or S3VI. The SSRI is a public-private collaboration with a diverse group of participants that you can see here from government, academia, and industry. The S3VI is a NASA institute located at Ames Research Center. S3VI is using its web portal to provide access to various tools, databases, and other resources to advance the field of small spacecraft systems. The idea for the knowledge base came out of the SSRI with the goal of leveraging small set best practices content that has been collected by the group over the last few years. S3VI funded Sidera Technologies development of the knowledge base website, and they're the owners of this new NASA tool which is hosted on their website that you see here. So now I'll explain the motivation and process behind the SSRI knowledge base. Our first step was to identify the problems that we're looking to address. The fundamental problem motivating this effort is that too many small sat missions fail, as evidenced by the data uh, shown in this pie chart from Michael Swartout's CubeSat database. So this data shows that 28% of CubeSat missions launched between 2000 and 2020 were either DOA or lost early in the mission. And we believe that this is an unacceptable failure rate that is significantly driven by two things. Uh, so first, that, there, uh, that many uh, SmallSat team members and stakeholders don't have uh, standard processes and institutional knowledge to guide the design and development of successful space missions. Uh, and then two, there's no quality public forum where the disparate set of individuals and organizations developing small sets can access and share best practices and quality vetted resources. The traditional approach to solving this problem involves document-based communication. And I'm sure that everyone watching this uh, has worked with the traditional systems of documentation that drive our current processes. Uh, everything from project management to testing and analysis. These documents do contain massive value and we recognize that. Uh, they represent the decades of experience in the traditional space engineering organizations who develop and maintain them. However, these standards and other documents are slow and expensive to prepare, maintain, and update and small sat technology and the processes behind it are constantly changing. Uh, so it's not practical to try and keep up with this moving target using traditional document-based communication. Uh, so we asked ourselves, how can we most efficiently solve this problem? And first we decided to embrace digital transformation and extend it to sharing uh, engineering information and best practices in a web-based tool. This will improve the efficiency of our knowledge sharing efforts and provide a solution that can keep up with the constant change and innovation in small satellite engineering. We also decided early on to avoid prescriptive solutions. So think the mission classes uh, like those that are shown here. These would be too restrictive and in many cases would prevent small set teams from leveraging off the shelf commercial technologies or designing for a wide range of risk postures. We also wanted to target a wide audience. Uh, targeting a wide audience will maximize our impact and the size of our user base. And we need contributions and feedback from users to grow and refine our product. The data shown here from Bryce Tech's Small Sats by the Numbers report uh, illustrates the diversity of the Small Sat community with significant participation and therefore uh, Small Sat launches from all of the market segments. So commercial, academic, government civil, government military, and nonprofit. This diversity is reflected in the risk postures, the processes, and the technologies employed by small SAD developers. So we want to engage that entire community and enable cross-pollination for the mutual benefit of all of our users. 
And then finally, we want to follow lean engineering processes. So getting a minimum viable product out fast, the skateboard in the diagram here, rather than working straight through to what we think is the best kind of final product at the beginning of the process. So this allows us to course correct and adapt to the feedback and results from this initial product that we've put out. And we wanted to ensure that the tool would be adaptable and extendable. This allows us to respond to our diverse and fast changing user base and to the continuous change and innovation that's happening in small set technology. So hopefully you understand the challenges we're trying to address with the SSRI knowledge base and our approach to addressing them. So that brings us to our solution, uh, starting with a useful comparison to Wikipedia. So like Wikipedia, the SSRI knowledge base is a free publicly available tool with no sign up or login process required to access the knowledge base. And our goal with this knowledge base is to become the go to starting place for information on the full breadth of small sat topics. In the interest of maximizing our ability to quickly evolve and grow alongside the state of the art, we're leveraging an open and collaborative approach to content generation. This will facilitate this continuous growth and improvement of the tool. It's also worth noting how the knowledge base is different from Wikipedia because we made some intentional decisions to ensure that we're creating a tool that's sustainable and providing high quality information to all of our users. In the interest of efficiency and sustainability, the knowledge base will primarily connect users to existing third party sources of information while also uh, providing original SSRI generated content and crowdsourced content that I'll show you in the demo. In the interest of verifying the quality of the content without a complex moderation system like the one that Wikipedia uses, uh, the SSRI will review any new content prior to incorporating it into the knowledge base. So the structure of the knowledge base includes two primary elements. First, we have the resource library shown here. These resources provide connections to that third party content that I just mentioned. And that third party content can be basically anything. It's categorized, they're categorized as articles, books, software tools, white papers, standards, and websites. Uh, but we define a few of these really broadly so we can capture almost any source of information. And then in each resource entry in the library, in addition to providing access to the resource, we add a description of it in the context of small satellite development and attach a one to five star rating that's calculated based on user input. And users can search this resource, uh, resource database, this resource library, but the primary way that we expect users to locate and access the information is through the second element of the SSRI knowledge base, which we call the mission confidence framework. And this refers to a structured set of topic pages, which reference resources in the resource library and provide order, structure, and context for all of the information in our knowledge base. In addition to a filterable listing of relevant resources, which are ranked by user rating on each topic page, uh, these topic pages include SSRI and user recommended best practices and lessons learned and user interfaces for submitting feedback and for users to submit uh, that uh, recommend additional content to incorporate into that topic page. So before we finally move on into the demonstration of the knowledge base website, I'd like to describe our plans for administration of the knowledge base. Uh, since this tool is built to grow and evolve over time, the process for updating the site and adding new content is very important. First, a user submits, submits a get involved message in the get involved interface that's at the bottom of each topic page and shown here on the right. The admin team will then receive an automatically generated email that identifies the topic page where the message was submitted and includes uh, that message and the optional follow up email. If the user message identifies some minor content correction or bug then the admin team will complete and deploy the necessary updates. However, if the user message suggests a substantive change to the content or suggests new content, then the email will be forwarded to the SSRI for review. And if the SSRI decides a change is appropriate, 
Then they'll email the admin with the updated content and using the administrative interface, the admin will make the recommended changes. In this case, adding a best practices and lessons learned item to the mission architecture design topic page. Uh, so now we'll move on to the demonstration. Okay, so as I mentioned earlier, the SSRI Knowledge Base is a NASA website that's hosted by S3BI. Uh, the Knowledge Base is live and accessible uh, through the S3BI website and at this uh, web address. So when we uh, enter the website, when we go to the, uh, the, the main page on the website, we're on the Explore page. Uh, the Explore page is uh, where users explore the mission confidence framework and find the topic pages that they're looking for. Uh, we can navigate back to this page in the time by clicking uh, either on the logo here or clicking explore in the header. Uh, we also have the about page in the header and um, we have uh, uh, on that about page the mission statement for the knowledge base, detailed instructions for its use, and a call for that uh, very important user input. We also have the resource search so we can search uh, search here and return a paginated list of search results with resources from our resource library and access those by clicking on the title. So we'll go back to the Explorer page for now and talk about the MCF interface. At the top, we provide a very brief set of instructions uh, on how to use the MCF interface and how to use the knowledge base overall. Um, and we can interact with this tree diagram that organizes all of the topic pages in the knowledge base. Uh, so the mission confidence framework is structured by mission phase and task. So we have conceptual design, planning and management, detailed design and analysis, manufacturing, integration and test, launch, and then finally operations. Under these section nodes, we have uh, subsections in some cases that go to the third level here. And we also have these unfilled nodes, which are the leaves of the tree diagram and contain our topic pages. Uh, so if we go to radiation testing, for example, and click on single event effects testing, uh, we can see that topic page with our scope and description content, uh, which as indicated by the, the, the name of that section, it describes and defines the scope of the task covered by that knowledge base topic. And in addition to sharing valuable high level information on each topic, it serves to <clears throat> excuse me, prevent overlap between the topics and make the scope of that page very clear to the users. And then we have the best practices and lessons learned listing. Uh, each best practice or lessons learned uh, should be brief. We generally cap it at three sentences and they don't have to be consistent in tone or content, but should provide some valuable information based on the author's experience. So those are expected to be pretty informal in style. And then we have the resource listing. So these will be listed by rating. Uh, you can see there's a rating on this NEP radiation links website uh, and includes the uh, author of uh, the, or sorry, the type of resource and the author of that resource. And then a brief uh, description in the context of small set uh, development and you can click on the ratings link here to submit a user rating. Okay. And you can see that we can also filter the resources. So if we only wanted to see websites, we could filter it that way. If we only wanted to see software tools, we can filter by that. And each uh, resource can be accessed one of, or, or has one of three methods for accessing the resource. So we have, let's go back to the mission confidence framework and check out a different page for this. So you can access resources or, or we can add resources to the knowledge base as PDFs, uh, DOIs or links. Uh, clicking on a PDF resource 
opens the resource in a new tab and, um, and, and provides that PDF directly to the user. The uh, link icon indicates that this takes you to another website. And then finally, the DOI link indicated by this book icon will take you to uh, a new browser tab with the digital object identifier URL for the original resource content. And then finally, at the bottom of each topic page, we have that get involved interface that I mentioned earlier. Uh, so this interface allows users to submit feedback, questions, recommended resources, or your own lessons learned and best practices on the topic. As I described in the slides, the submitted text is emailed to the registered site administrator email address. And if the user chooses to include their email address for follow-up, will also be included in the email sent to administrators. Uh, so that completes my demo of the SSRI knowledge base, and I'll switch back to a final slide. So I'd like to thank my co-authors for their role in the project, the NASA STMD Small Spacecraft Technology Program for funding the work. And then finally, our SSRI and S3BI teams who've been working hard to bring this new tool to the small site community. I'd also like to encourage you all to uh, use the knowledge base and contribute to it at the web address listed here. And reach out to me if you have any follow-up questions or would like to get involved. I'd also like to encourage you to participate in our CubeSat Developers Workshop Virtual Side Meeting on the SSRI knowledge base where we will be collecting feedback and input to inform further development of the tool. Thank you and I look forward to answering any of your questions during our live Q&A session.